A very warm welcome to the Mary Ward family worldwide. We are so grateful that you join in prayer with us on this special Institute feast. From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Cardinal Collins. At today's Mass, in union with the members of the IBVM and CJ Sisters, we celebrate the birth of their founder, the Venerable Mary Ward, in 1585. Cardinal Bourne, writing in 1921, said this, It is a duty of gratitude to recall continually that the very existence of the modern educational and charitable and religious orders of women was made possible by the supernatural foresight heroic perseverance and terrible disappointments and sufferings of Mary Ward. To no one after their own founders do religious owe a greater debt of gratitude than to Mary Ward. Members of the Institute she founded have been carrying out Mary Ward's mission of empowering women to take their rightful place in society and in the church for over 400 years across the world. 176 years ago, Loretto sisters from Ireland brought Mary Ward's vision to North America. So we celebrate that anniversary as well. We welcome the Loretto and CJ community from around the world to the celebration of this mass. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. As we prepare now to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us to the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. David brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen garment. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to the house where he was, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's an important fact that we should keep in mind that the Second Vatican Council following in the tradition, the living faith of the church, spoke of a universal call to holiness, not a universal call to mediocrity, but a universal call to holiness, to give our whole selves everything to the Lord. Maybe not dramatically as some people have done, some of the great mystics and saints of that nature, the great martyrs, but nonetheless to give ourselves totally heart and mind and soul to the service of the Lord to do his will. This is the center of our life in Christ. And it's something which we all need to think about as we serve the Lord day by day, as we journey through this valley of tears on our way home to the heavenly city of Jerusalem. We're called not to dip our toe into the pool of life, but to dive in completely, utterly and totally through the quality of our life, the way in which we serve the Lord with all our heart and all our mind and all our life, not just part of our heart and part of our part. No, we are called to that totality, which may not be spectacular, but which is nonetheless profound. It changes us by God's grace and allows us to be instruments of God's grace to change others. And we look at the readings today. We see the reading from 2 Samuel with David, not just sort of saying, I worship you, Lord, but dancing before the ark with wild abandon. That is a model, a sign, a a kind of symbol of the internal spirit with which we are to serve the Lord with heart and mind and soul, not just doling out our life with little teaspoons of ourselves, but giving ourselves completely to the service of the Lord. Now, we're not all asked to go spinning around and dancing the way David did, but in the internal disposition of our hearts, that giving totally of self, that offering completely, that is what we see as the call to holiness in wherever we happen to be. The same thing in the gospel today, Uh, our Lord's family comes and uh, and they want to reach into him, but he says, look, I, my mother, brothers, sisters, the whole family, we're all, whoever does the will of God is my mother and brother and sister. It is that complete giving oneself to do the will of God. As he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I remember over the years, I've now been a priest for over 50 years and uh, 
I've often thought of different penances to give people, like 300 push-ups, 20 laps around the church, things of that nature. But instead, I just simply say, just say the Our Father once, and especially the words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's the secret of holiness. Just do that and actually do it and not just talk about it. And that is the call to holiness. And of course, we see that represented most fully in our Blessed Mother. Behold, a handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. It's one of the reasons why it's a good idea to pray the Angelus throughout the day. And so that's what we're called to. And that's what we see in Mary Ward. She was of a family who, in a time of great difficulty, a recluson family who had refused to take part in the uh, changes that have been made in, the, in their country. They were faithful, utterly faithful, despite persecution to the, to the Lord, and especially to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, which is at the center and heart of where we draw strength to live a life of witness in this world, even a world which, as in the days of Mary Ward, was rejecting those who wanted to serve the Lord with heart and mind and soul and to be faithful. And so that total giving of self is something which, uh, which he showed. And the vision, vision based upon the word of God and upon the life of faith. And a vision, without vision, the people perish. She's a person of vision, whose vision still continues to this day in the work of uh, all of those who see in her a model and a sign of holiness. She famously was said to have said, do good, but don't just sort of do it, do it well. Do it all the way. Be all in in what we're doing in our life in Christ. And it's because of that, because she was rooted so deeply in our Lord, that she was able to put up with all kinds of trials and cares from outside the church and the persecutions that all the other faithful Christians were facing and also at all misunderstandings and rejections from within the church. We cannot base our life upon the feelings and the sentiments of, that are just around us floating in the world. We must root them totally in our fidelity to our Lord Jesus Christ, especially as we see his will made known in the word of God, the living faith of the church, as we encounter him in the Holy Eucharist. Here he is, he comes, and we say to him, as we receive Holy Communion, Amen, it is the Lord, which is not only a recognition of our adoration of our blessed Lord in the Holy Eucharist, but it's saying, here I am, totally, I come to do your will. And so I think in all of the saints, most of all in Our Lady, who be it done unto me according to your word is the great model for holiness, and in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, because each one of us is tempted to say, my kingdom come, my will be done, and then there's just division and confusion. But totally give ourselves to the will of the Lord. If we do that, following all of the saints in a particular way, looking to the great example of Mary Ward, in her fidelity, in her seeking nothing less than a life of holiness in doing the will of God, she herself attained that great holiness and she gave us an example and a way in which we can serve faithfully our blessed Lord. We pray for all of those in the family of Mary Ward throughout the world and that they may in every way seek and live with total disposition to the service of the Lord, that holiness which she gives us, of which she gives us such a great example. May our words, our actions, our whole life be that thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Here I am, the handmaid of the Lord, the servant of God, giving myself completely with wild abandon to the service of the Lord. And now let us bring our prayers to God who created the earth and its, and its fullness. Let us pray for Pope Francis, Archbishop Leo, and all our church leaders. We ask God to inspire all faith leaders to focus on what we have in common and urge their followers to respect every human person since we are all made in the image of God. We pray to 
We pray to the Lord. May God enlighten the leaders of all nations so that they look beyond personal gain and national interests and work together for the good of all people and the planet, our common home, so that all may live in peace and security with dignity. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, you gifted Mary Ward with vision and courage. Support all members and colleagues of the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Congregation of Jesus, who have shared and still share that vision and use their gifts to further the work of bringing this world to the fullness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all our deceased members and co-workers past pupils and supporters. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray in thanksgiving for all who play a role in bringing the daily TV Mass to faithful around the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our God of light, to live in your house is the desire of all your children. Hear our prayers and help us in all of our needs. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, be pleased to receive us and accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him, through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, the blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of the peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Yeah,